time is now. Let everyone in the listening audience grab their scriptures, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Listen and learn the true meaning of the Old and New Testament of the Bible, the Psalms of David, the Lost Books, and the Holy Quran. There are no more secrets. All false things will perish. So come and learn the undefeatable teachings of the only man that has the answers to the problems of a troubled world, as Sayyid al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al -Mah. John answers the question in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Open the Bible to John, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, and read it. And John tells you why he was the one sent to clean up Paul's mess. There was a man sent from Allah whose name was John. The same came for a witness to testify, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, eight, but was sent to testify of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. This is John the Baptist, right? No, this is John, son of Zebedee. You, you're saying that verse six is talking about there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness. You're saying that that John is, is John, the, son of Zebedee. He's the, the one, apostle. the one they signal out in the book of Mark, chapter. 1 verse 19 as the Apostle John. They tell you he was the Apostle John. He was the one sent in the year 98 to clean up, well first 96 he got the book of Revelation which sent so much confusion because people couldn't understand what the Apocalypse meant that he was given later in 98 the book of John which was sent to clear up all the lies that Paul perpetrated against Christ. That's what John was sent for. John was raised, his sole purpose was to correct all the lies that Paul had taught and how Paul had perverted Jesus' teaching. That's why he sent John as a witness. Otherwise, see, here's a point in here. If people want to get, you know, especially Christians, they want to get particular about it. It says in there that this man was sent to do what? The reason why you know this couldn't be John the Baptist why? is because John the Baptist was dead before this revelation. Before this revelation? Before this revelation. This revelation was in year 98. Yeah, and this is... Go ahead. But this, this is uh, John's, this, like it says, according to John, this is the gospel. And this gospel varies from the other three gospels. And, and, and it tells more, more about what Jesus did, the uh, ministry of John the Baptist. It starts out telling more about uh, John the Baptist, whereas, you know, the other gospels just say, well, uh, about this time John was in prison. But John's gospel, the apostle John, picks up with the earlier part of the ministry. But that's why I know and I think that verse 6 is talking about there was a man sent from God whose name was John. I look at his John. Yeah, Show me. If you look further into this 
quote, you'll find out that a reference is made to John the Baptist further in this quote. When you start around 21, it starts to talk about John the Baptist and starts making reference and they ask him, what then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou a prophet? And he answered, no. This is reference here to John the Baptist. And in 33, they say, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. The game is, the first part of this book is not John the Baptist. It's speaking about the John of the book of Revelations. Because the book of Revelations, chapter 1, tells you the revelations of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he, here's the word again, sent it and signified it by his angel through his servant John. Yeah. Right? Now, wait a minute. Now read number 2. Now, what John are we talking about here in the book of Revelations? John the Baptist again? Yeah. Or John, son of Zebedee? Uh, Revelation, that's talking about John, I believe, John the Apostle. John Zebedee. Now watch yeah. what it says in number two. Who what? Uh, I'm not trying to... Oh, Revelation chapter one, verse two. Oh, verse two. Okay. All right, so now what's, what's your question? What do you want to read? Read Revelation chapter one, verse two. Uh, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of, things, of Jesus Christ and to all things that he saw. Now this is the same exact statement <clears throat> as mentioned in St. John's chapter one. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came to what? For a witness, to bear witness of the light. Now I'll go back to Revelation chapter 1 verse 2. Who bore record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right? Yes. And of all things. They use an exact terminology. What I think you're thinking is that John, because it says John here, that it's speaking about just the baptism. And it's not. It's the book changes. At one point, they're speaking about the Heavenly Father, where Christians think they're talking about Jesus, and they use the word, the Word, and they say that Word represents Jesus. The reason why they say that is because they don't know none of the Semitic languages. They keep taking it back to the Greek, and the book was not revealed in the Greek. It was revealed in the Semitic language, and then passed into Aramic, and then into Hebrew, and later into Greek. And the point is that if they looked at the word, Word, they see that it has a feminine ending, Kalimat. And that represents either a thing or a plural, but never a person. If it was referred to a man, it would be kalam, and the word kalam, an individual. So what I'm trying to say is this book of John, the Christians are confused because of the translation of it. They don't realize that grammatical changes in it in the Semitic languages tells you who it's talking about and when. In English, they don't see that. Unfortunately, they've been brainwashed to go for the, go back to the Greek for their translations when the Bible wasn't revealed in Greek. It was put into Greek. If they went back to the Hebrew or the Arabic of it, they'd find out that the word kalimat has a tarma buta on the end, which is a feminine gender, and either represents a plural, in this case the word being the Elohim, or the fact that Allah merely says to a thing, kun fayakun, when he created Jesus, he merely said, be in this, Jesus came into existence, and not Jesus himself. They don't realize that this verse is taking a change of personalities and places. They think it flows straight on in. Well, I, I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm with the majority of the Christians. I do think that this was written in Greek. Well, maybe... Wait, 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 wait. The, no, I'm sorry, son. The Christians do not say it was written in Greek. They don't, that's not what they think. What, the New Testament? Right, they don't think that. They think that the New Testament, listen to the word densmil. You hear the word densmil in here? They said a, a densmil. Jesus said, Eli, Eli, lemon for Bethany. These yeah. are words that are from another language. They are right. not Greek. I know that. So, okay, the point is that I'm, I'm trying to make, no, the Christians do not, not the Christian scholars, they do not agree that the Bible was in Greek. They agree that the Bible was translated into Greek as Jesus' teachers or disciples traveled around teaching. They agree that it went into Greek, but that the original language of it, you can ask any Jehovah Witness, any Seventh-day Adventist, even Jimmy Swagger, the father of the Pentecostal church in his books, tells you that the original text was revealed, they say Hebrew, because they don't know that the Seretic Arabic and Hebrew and Aramic are the same language, so they always just say Hebrew, and Hebrew just describes an event that Abraham did when he crossed the Tigris Euphrates Valley. It was not the name of a language, it was an incident. Well, okay, but there's still much, much division between the scholars on that, because they, some, scholars, scholars, you're right. some, some scholars just say, yeah, it was uh, probably penned in Aramaic first because Jesus you know, spoke Galilee in Aramaic. That's but right. the proof in the pudding is, is that you got over 4,000 different uh, ancient manuscripts or fragments in Greek, but you ain't got none in Aramaic. That's not true. 
That's not true. What you're saying is not true. You don't know what you're saying. Well, what's the oldest known manuscript that you know of? Uh, Reddit Arabic is the oldest manuscript of Jesus' writings. The okay. book of Revelation and the book of John are in Syriac Arabic. The only books that you have in Greek are the books of Paul. And even in Acts, when he speaks about speaking in tongues, if you go back to it in Acts 2, you're going to see that he even there tells you they're speaking in Arabic because he says in the language of the Galileans. And the Galileans were Arabs. They spoke Arabic and Hebrew, not Greek. He didn't say in the language of the people of Galatian. He said the Galileans, being the people of Galilee, not the Galatians, which Paul did is play tricks with y'all on words and made y'all think at one point when he was saying Galileans that he was saying the Galatians of the Greeks. Well, I understand what you're saying. It's just like if you're going to go to, if you're Spanish and you live in a Spanish neighborhood, when you talk to another Spanish person, you're going to speak in your native language. But when you're living in America, you learn English, and that's what you're going to do. You're gonna do. The intellectual language at that time, the, the language, for the most part, was Greek. The Romans, no. Notice what you're saying, my son. Notice exactly what you're saying. You're saying the language of that time was Greek, spoken by Romans. Romans didn't speak Greek, they spoke Latin. Yeah, and you know that the Latin language, I mean, they pretty much, once they got into Greek culture and understand, they looked at that language as the language of the intellectuals. That's not the truth. That's the white man's indoctrination to keep y'all thinking of the Greeks, and that knowledge that they stole from Egypt was really theirs. That's not true. Greek is not looked upon as an intellectual language except by the European nation. Arabic is looked upon as an intellectual language. Hebrew is looked upon as an intellectual language. Aramaic, Cuneiform, and hieroglyphics to those people who study the scriptures. But those people who want to put people into a philosophical doctrine have to pull people out of the scriptural or the Semitic languages and take them into European dialects, which is Greek, French, and German. Latin in itself is an ancient language like Arabic. A format, and if you know Spanish, you'll know that the format of Spanish is very much like Arabic, not Greek at all. No, the Romans did not speak Greek. They spoke Latin. And Jesus and them spoke Aramic and Hebrew and, and Syriac Arabic. Greek didn't get into way after. Greek was the language they used to, to alter the Bible from its original meanings. They was able to take words in Greek that they couldn't use in Hebrew. Let me give you an example. In St. John's chapter 1, verse 41, where they speak about Simon and them finding the Messiah and calling him the Christ. See, that only could be done in Greek. Because in Arabic, we have the word Messiah. From the word, we all get the word Messiah. Or in Hebrew, we have Meshach. The same root word, to wipe something and make it clean or to anoint it pure. Now, what happened is, when the Greeks, they couldn't do that in Hebrew, because the translation would have been, we found Messihan, a Messiah, who's being translated, El Messiah, the only Messiah. That's what he said. We found a Messiah, but they're saying it's the only Messiah. That didn't make sense for them. So what they did is added the word Christos in there, the Greek word for anointed, as they say. And then it changed from, we found the Messiah, who is being interpreted, the Christ. See, they could only do that in Greek. They couldn't do it in Latin, and they couldn't do it in, in any of the Semitic language. The reason why they couldn't use Latin is because when you get to the word for soul and spirit in Latin, you have a problem with this Holy Ghost stuff. So they had to graft into Latin the Greek word for Holy Ghost, because in the Spanish language, the word soul and the word uh, spirit is the same word. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I follow So what happened is they could only trick us by taking us away from the Semitic language, taking us away from the language that Jesus spoke himself and putting us into the Greek language so that they could combine Greek philosophy like the very name Jesus. Well, I'm sorry. I just have to go with the fact that whatever language you're speaking, he's saying that he's the Messiah, and when it's translated into Greek, it's the Christ. It means anointed, the same thing. You can and it's not my fault for, uh, you know, uh, having this language and that language. You know, that started back there at the uh, Tower of Babel, uh, Babel with the Confucian I'm not, I don't, tongue. I'm so not, God I'm, intended, and he knew that everybody was going to have different languages. But, look, we can all come together on that. I mean, you got the people who translated the Old Testament. Uh, the Jewish people who spoke Greek, they translated. They didn't speak Greek. Stop saying that. What do you mean that. they didn't? They spoke Hebrew. How? Huh? I'm saying, yeah, they spoke Hebrew and they spoke Greek. There is no such thing as a Greek translation of the Old Testament that the white man didn't make. The original Israelites kept the language in Hebrew. That's why the Jehovah Witnesses have such a problem about the tetragrammer where they speak about <coughs> Yahweh or Yahweh or Jehovah. Because it was very important that they continue to speak the language of their fathers, which was ancient Hebrews. The Jews do not believe in praying in any other language except 
Hebrew. I'm talking about during the time that Alexander came along and, and took over the That land. was not Hebrew, that was Phoenician. That, that's when the children of Israel had, fought, had, had lived in the Euphrates Valley and fell up under the Phoenicians. And Nebuchadnezzar them only came to conquer them, to destroy the Torah so they could make a new Bible. And then after that, they rewrote the Bible. And ever since then, y'all have had a perverted version of the Bible. Except for the original text that was protected by a prophet called Ezra in the Bible, who spoke Arabic and it tells you they lived in Arabian Peninsula and he protected the original scripture of the Torah and it fell in the hands of the Arab people. It never fell back in the hands of Israel. After they came out of bondage in 556 under Cyrus and Darius and went back to rebuild the temple, they never ever had the Torah in its pure form again. They only had it in the Arab world where it was protected by certain people who were Seretic Arabs who kept the original text pure and it was passed to them by a prophet called Isra who the Israelites wanted to call the Messiah. So when did this corruption supposed to come about? At what time? When he you remember know Cyrus and Darius? Yeah. When the children of Israel, in the books of Isra of the Bible, tells you all about the children of Israel leaving captivity under Babylon when Darius freed them from Cyrus and Cyrus is a number of the Persian word for Christ. If you look it up, it's the same word for Christ, Cyrus freed them, and then a prophet named Haggai took them over to rebuild the Temple of Solomon. Nebuchadnezzar, who had persecuted uh, the prophet Daniel, had already destroyed the scriptures and burnt them. And the only man who could preserve those scriptures is that one prophet called Israel. And the children of in that same Israel is the one who kept the tablets pure. That's they're right. giving you poor information. They know what they're doing. They know they're messing with our heads. They're trying their best to keep us from knowing the truth about the Messiah, Jesus. So we will, they, don't, they don't want us to acknowledge him as our savior. They want us to make him a Greek god. When he was not a Greek god, he was a Messiah, the anointed son of the Most High, sent into the world to remove sin from the world and to establish a kingdom of righteousness. Okay. The Messiah. That's what he was sent for, not to be a god. The Greeks wanted to make him god. Let me just finish one thing. And that's why they created the word Jesus. The word Jesus is a fabrication of the word Jah, a, a perverted form of Yah from Yahweh or Yahweh and the word Zeus, when they got to the Nicene Council, the second one, and they decided to take the name and form Jesus, so they can prove the God of Zeus. If you ever saw a picture of the God Zeus, you'd see that it's a picture of Jesus. The long hair, the, the long beard, and the robe. It's the exact same picture. When they combined the doctor, the Romans, and the Greeks, along with the Judaic teachings, then they came up with the name Jesus. And that became Ja and Zeus. The, the Roman God and the Hebraic God. And then Christos was from the Latin root into the Greek. Uh -huh. Okay, All right, one more question. I see everybody got a lot of questions up here. Um, now, you know I believe that the Messiah was definitely crucified, no doubt about it. No problem. It. And I mean, I base that on a lot of different things. Well, I want to know, do you, you, do you reject history? Uh, Not at all. Do you I reject, reject, do you, are there such things to you as apostolic fathers? Um, I mean, do you trust their letters? Or no, I don't. They, you I don't trust, trust any of their history. In other words, you're saying that... Then let me tell you what I'm saying, then you won't have to say what I'm saying. But I, I believe... You know what I wanted to say, the rest of what I wanted to say. I thought you was asking me a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to know, do you think that all those people who um, died in the persecutions and whatnot, the 45,000 that were tortured, I mean, you think that these apostles came up and they just fabricated, you know, they were cowards in the yeah. beginning. Now, granted, Christianity got, you know, corrupted down the line, but I'm talking about that flock. You know, there yes. were... There how many people saying? was it? There were thousands of people that heard the message. Let me answer the question. Said, I understand what you're saying. Let me answer the question. The first problem I have with that is, let me establish what I do believe in. I do believe in the apostle John, son of Zebedee. Why not Peter? They were partners. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because somewhere along the line, Peter listened to Paul and John broke away from him. That's right in the books of uh, Galatians and Corinthians. Well, I'll tell I'll Peter and Paul were partners and they both read John's and works and, and thought they were But they because Peter preferred to follow. Uh, you know why Jesus called Peter Suffers? Why, why he called him what? Suffers. Uh, meaning rock or stubborn. Well, yeah, I personally know why. Because well, he was the found, he was the, uh, the spokesman for all the apostles. He was the one that the first one that okay. ever went to a Gentile, uh -huh. which was Cornelius, and it right. wasn't Paul, it was Peter. Now, if right. Paul came and said he saw Jesus in a vision, well, Paul shouldn't have believed Peter because Peter said, I saw Jesus in a vision too. So he said, right. who would have believed Now, let me ask you a question. If all these men saw Jesus in a vision, 
What I said, yeah, in us, and when he says us, he's talking about those who are faithful to it, which are really Christians, and, and according to the Bible, the only way to be a Christian is to have the Holy Spirit of God in you. No problem. Don't have it, I'm not, you got it. So he says us, yeah, because Jesus said. There's no distinction between you being a son of God or God being in you and Jesus, according to, according to John's letter. According yeah. to this letter, there's no difference. Yes or no? I have to read it. I mean, I, I don't... Huh? I'm sorry that... He says the Father is in us. Yeah. Over and over in the letter of John, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Yeah, the Father is in us because Jesus told you, if you do what I say, you know, my, my Father will come back and he will be in you. He will put his spirit in you and he will dwell with you. You he never and me, said, I and wait a minute. Us. He you never know, said my Father would come back. He never did. He never that, said my Father. Not my Father would come back. Let me hear that. All right, that's, uh, I think it's in 7. Now, but if you, I want you on this here for the congregation. If you look at the letter, of 1 John chapter 5 and read the 18th verse you see it says and we know whoever is born of God sinneth not but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and the wicked one touches him not you follow this is talking about the antichrist if you go down further you're going to see how he eliminates what Christians are saying he's talking about idolism people who worship idols by the time you get to 21 when he tells his two little children who he's talking to he says little children keep yourselves from idols He's not talking about an antichrist as a being. He's talking about statues that people worship, which is in the likeness of the antichrist. He says, right at the 21st verse of the fifth uh, chapter of the first book of John, the first letter of John, the epistle, he says, little children, what? Keep yourselves from idols. Amen. He's not talking about men. He's talking about yeah. idols. I mean, he's just instructing the church. Or he's not talking to, to the two little kids. He's not talking to the church. Okay. My point is this, you got Jesus and he, you got him praying for you, you know, I hear sometimes, I heard on a couple of your tapes where you always like to quote the fact that they say that Jesus was, um, uh, I, I mean, Peter was going to deny Jesus three times. Well, yeah, that's true, he did say that, but you know, he also said another thing, he said, you know, Peter, listen, yeah, I know that you're going to deny me three times, but look here, I'm going to pray to the Father, mm -hmm. so when you get your strength back, now he didn't say, uh, if you get your strength back, mm -hmm. then you strengthen the Father, because right. see, when you got him praying for you, like what he said, yeah. uh, you, you got something real strong behind you. No problem. And, no problem. and he did get his strength back, and he strengthened his brother. Can I then, establish a question here? Can yeah, I but, establish something? John, John in chapter 17 of John, uh, right. that's the big main chapter. And 18 is going to get even better because Peter didn't even see Jesus during that time. So we'll go back to that. Peter never got in the room. When he got ready to go into the room, a, little, a girl came out to him and recognized him. He still went outside, so he never saw the trial of Jesus. He didn't know if it was Jesus or not. But the point is, you, you're doing a very good thing right now. You're making a very clear point for us Muslims. You know what that point is? What is it? You're separating Jesus from being his father. And that's a key point. That's very good. I mean, every, I mean, I know a lot of people say, you know, they, they want to say that Jesus and God are the same, right. which in fact, they are the same, but God is Jesus' father. But we, as Christians, believe that uh, when Moses, or when God... Are you and your father the same? Excuse me? Are you and your father exactly the same? Are me and my father the same? Yes. Exactly the same? Yes. But I have, no, we're not exactly the same. So no, Jesus but I have power of him. I have Jesus and his here. father exactly the same? Not exactly the same. Then they're no. two different things. They're two different things. All right, they're the difference same. between the heavenly father and the son. They're two different, we established they're two different things. They're not the same. Well, the reason why I say that they're the same because the person that spoke to Moses, when Moses said to him, listen, who do I tell them that sent me? The person said, I am who I am. I look at that person as other Christians do to be Jesus. Because That's a nice opinion. No, but, but, not but true. No, listen, back in John, in the 8th chapter of John, when the Jews got, got ready to stone him, because he said, uh, before Abraham was, I am. When he said, I am, they identified that because they know scripture, and they knew That's what he said about that in Exodus. Now go on and I let mean, him tell them, when he, go on and same chapter where Jesus tells them they are all gods too. He yes, said, we wanted to stone. He said, for good work you don't stone me. But because I said you are God, you want to stone me. Don't stop. So that means we are a God, right? Because Jesus said so. I'm talking about him saying and making a statement that before Abraham was living, I lived. No, I'm not right? saying before God was living, That's I not saw him. him. That's not what he said. What, what is he saying? You know, he's telling people right there, because those people said, you're not even 50 years old. Yes, you're right. saying, you're not, you know what the 50 represents? Do I know what 50 represents? Yes, do you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know some things that 50 represent, but... I mean, what does it represent in that statement when, it's, when the so-called Jews are saying to him, you're not even 50 years old yet? 
Oh, just simply to me, it just represents a, a number that they called off. You know, no, it doesn't represent a number they called off. In Judaic teachings, a man has to be 52 years old before he's classified as an elder, a sheikh. Well, what did, what, did Jesus want them to think he was elder? Is that, I mean, what are you saying? Was Jesus one of the elders who was around the throne or not? They call him the Ancient of Days, don't they? Yeah, but I'm saying... Wouldn't, that, wouldn't the Ancient mean elder? Yes or no? Yeah, but that, that, what does that have to do with them saying that, that you know, was you, that, you, that, 50 years old? They could have said you're not even 60 years but old I'm, yet. But because they were Jews, they knew what they were talking about when they said you're not 50. They were saying, you're saying you're before Abraham, and you're not even a chef yet. There's rituals in Judaism, son. Okay, where, but let me, that's if you want to the point. Okay. I mean, it still says it, doesn't it? No, it says something different. You just don't know because you don't know Judaic teachings. There's, when a little boy gets circumcised, he's put on a chair of Elijah, and then he's considered Elijah. When the circumcision is complete, he's put on an altar, and a certain recitation of the Torah is written, and then he's considered Abraham. See, there's things that take place in the Judaic teachings that the Christians never picked up because they take the time to follow the teachings of the man that they're following. If y'all would follow the teachings that Jesus followed when he kept the Sabbath and Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Oh, you mean like the Christians did for the first 400 years after the crucifixion? Then why did y'all change? Why did we change? Yes. Well, because simply because, uh, you know, that's been prophesied throughout the whole thing. Paul says, Where did Jesus say there's going to be a change? Well, he said number one in the 24th change. chapter of Matthew, he says, first of all, there are going to be many people who are going to come out and deceive you. They're going to say that I'm a Jesus Christ. said, gives you all these things. And that's where did exactly he say change? Happened. When he said that, son, he was talking about Christians. He was saying, many are going to come out and say, I am Christ. That people are going to confess to the world that he is Christ, but they're not going to really believe. So we acknowledge that Jimmy Swagger and a couple of other so-called Christian preachers who are out preaching saying, God talked to me, I spoke with Jesus, and was out fornicating and committing all kinds of sins. Doesn't this sound like what Jesus was talking about? Many people going to come out in his name and deceive many. This is what we fear. Anybody that comes under the name Christian, we got to watch. Because Jesus never knew the name Christian. They first called them Christians in Antioch. Jesus never heard the name Christian. Jesus told them in St. John chapter 14, they're going to put you out of the synagogues. Not they're going to put you out of any churches. The only reference he makes to churches in the book of Revelations is in a bad connotation about the churches in the Isles of Greece where the angels were sent and they sinned all different kind of ways. And he's called the blasphemous Jews, those Jews who are synagogues of sin, because those are the ones who went and followed Paul and moved to that Greek doctrine while Revelations 2 is speaking about the Isles of all the different hours of Greece in, the, in uh, Asia Minor. Because those are the people who left his original teachings and went out and spread this false doctrine amongst the Greeks and now have seized the world with this antichrist doctrine that Jesus told us to look out for. They said they're going to even perform signs and wonders. They put all this stuff about laying on of hands and healing people. So he said, be careful because you're not, they're going to trick you with that stuff. Because he spoke, like this here, when they asked him, what, now you know your Bible well, when they asked Jesus, what is the highest of all the commandments, what did he say? I think it was um, to love the Father, I believe. The Lord thy God is one God, you shall have no other God before him. Then he instituted a new commandment in the upper room, and that new commandment was that you love one another. Those are the two points he brought forth. Now, if we have one God, the word one, in every language, always seems to mean the same thing. It's not one and of three parts, not one in shared position. One means one. And he said, the Lord thy God is one God. And you should have another God before him. Paul came along and introduced, a, and introduced a trinity into this thing. He introduced a Greek doctrine, which if you look in the book of the letters again, of the, uh, John, the apostle, you'll find that in the fifth chapter, the seventh verse, they added a verse in there that's not in the original text and, and to justify what's in the eighth verse where they explain the Trinity as the three forms of baptism. And yes. the first form was baptism by fire, which was the, the blood sacrifice. The next one was by water, which is John the Baptist's. And the third one was by the Holy Spirit, which was Jesus's. Well, that's good. I mean, I'm, I see you know that, and everybody is going to know it. I mean, I know that too. So, I mean, there, there are other documents in there, a whole other... Can you believe in that? No, those... Do you believe? Do you what? believe in that? The, the Trinity? No, do you believe that that concept of the Trinity that's formed by Christians is faith? Is, is, I don't believe in that, no. Oh, good. Now, it turns because I know that that came into a later, uh, later copies of the New Testament. Is that in your Bible, though? Is it? Yeah, it's in my Bible. So why are you reading that Bible if it has something that you know has been added? How would you know what's been added and what hasn't? Well, because I have people that know that. What that people? The other... these, are, these, are, these are gods? 
Well, I mean, the same people that I learned that information from and learned the other things that are rendered uh, not in older manuscripts, that's how I know it. So I don't necessarily have to go buy another one. But when I look in the book of Acts and I see that word Easter there, I know that Easter wasn't the original, me, the original word that was put there, so I don't necessarily have to go buy another Bible. Wait a minute. I know wait a minute. That is. Somebody lied to you. The word, the word was there. The word was not Easter. It was Ishtar from Esther. Well, the, the word was, was, that's was another Easter. Easter. But it was the name of a person. I'm going to say the word, the original word that, that uh, Luke wrote was, was Passover. So they said Easter. No, it wasn't the word Passover. Okay. No, it was It was Passover. Okay, don't worry about it. I want you to read to me chapter 10, verse 34. Of what? The same, of John. The same chapter we talked about. Chapter 10, verse 34. Okay. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are God? Now let me stop. Jesus said, I said, you are God. It's not written in your law that you are God. Now, are all men God or not? According to Jesus. Well, I don't think that he's speaking about all men. Okay, men. what is he speaking about? Uh, he's talking about the chosen few that God chooses to give him. Okay, now read the next verse so you'll see. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. And who did the word of God come to? According to y'all. According to me, it came to Israel. According to y'all, it came to everybody, right? The word of God came to everybody, right? Well, at, at one point, but when Jesus came in his ministry, he came for one specific purpose, I that see. was for Israel. Uh, but but all, yeah. Did the word of God come for everybody, yes or no? Did the word, uh, when he's speaking of as the scriptures, in the scriptures, yes. and that came for Israel, the nation Israel, that's who it came for. So right the nation of Israel are the only gods then. Well, not everybody in the nation of Israel is a god. That's what he said. Don't change Jesus' words now. Yeah, he, he said, said everyone. everyone. Uh, but he's not, he can't possibly be talking about everybody because he's not talking. He's God. The man that went out and killed his mother in that time. That does not make him less than God. Huh? That doesn't make him less than God. Well, it, in fact, to kill a person makes you nearer to God. You barely give life and take life. So anybody can do that. So anybody can be God. So can a dog do that. Dogs do it. And if, they have a soul, and if they have a soul in them and a spirit activating them, they would also be a part of God's creation and therefore be God. I'm asking you, what is the difference between Jesus saying he's God and me or that brother behind you or that sister behind you saying they're God? According to Jesus, there is no difference. Well, there's a marriage Let me tell you the reason that so you understand, so be fair. The resurrection is the whole lifeline of Christianity. Which resurrection? The resurrection of him. Which one? The one that he, when he was crucified, so that, beat it, to death. So, the fact that Jesus came back from the dead, that's a great thing? <laughs> Definitely. Then tell me why we ain't worshiping Lazarus. Why we ain't worshiping Lazarus? Because he always Lazarus, came back from the dead. Because he's showing you the power of himself. Right. I mean, he's I agree. showing you. And God is showing us the power of himself through Jesus, correct? Yeah, but see, this was something that happened a long time ago. This was going to happen. Good. Tell me why we're not worshiping Lazarus. He was resurrected from the dead. And by the way, the prophet Elijah also resurrected a little boy from the dead. Why are we not worshiping these people? Yeah, because well, so resurrection did, is the point. I mean, Peter re resurrected uh, Joker. Uh, this then why are we worshiping uh, other people? No. Just I'm, to show the strength of God. I'm no. coming off what you said. You said it's all about the resurrection. And I'm showing you there was a man named Lazarus who was resurrected from the dead before Christ. Resurrected by some other man. Okay, but Jesus so said what? on his own, I'm going to be back three days and three nights. That's how long I'm going to be there. Right. No less than that. But three days, three nights, 72 hours hey. after that, I'll be resurrected. Ain't nobody can do that. No one has done Lazarus that. Lazarus did it. He brought no. a man back to life. Lazarus died, and somebody else, Jesus, came and... Lazarus came back. Remember, he said, I'm saying a double portion of my spirit. Why the people asked John the Baptist, was he Elijah? He did come back. Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus. They came back on their own. Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus. You mean yeah, according, according to where in the Gospel of Matthew? Is according right? to your teachings. Well, no, but that's, that's just it. I mean, here you got Paul, I mean, uh, Peter and John, if you think about the concept of this. Yeah, right. They see uh, Elijah and Moses. Now, you notice when they asked Jesus, look, can we, first of all, they didn't have no pictures, so I didn't know what Moses and Elijah looked like. How do you anyway. know they didn't have no pictures? Well, I mean, come on, look at him. He's a fisherman. He's hardly, he's not good. How do you know he didn't have any pictures is the question. You just said he didn't have the pictures. men did not, they didn't run around with pictures How do you know that? And Elijah. How do you know? Well, there's no evidence to support that they are. I mean, yes, so, there is evidence to support that they are. I'll tell you the evidence that supports that they are. 
all of the great leaders of Babylon, the Akkadians, the Cuneiforms of ancient Egyptians always drew pictures of their kings. But they and, the law, and the law of not drawing pictures of the Creator didn't come until the books of Leviticus way after. So in Abraham's time and in Noah's time, they did draw pictures of each other because it wasn't considered a sin until the law of Moses. So they did have pictures. Why do you say they don't? Well, they had pictures of ever go against the whole thing. I mean, if they made a picture uh, of Moses, yes. Yeah. Do you know how these people would idolize this 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 picture of Moses? I mean, no, I don't. They were I know. I don't. I what I do God know, surely wouldn't want that. What I do know is y'all made a picture of Jesus, and y'all are idolizing him. No, no, not y'all. You're talking about the fact that those people Christians. who John said crept in from us, not the Christians. You're talking about the many who came to deceive, not the ones who were elect. You're talking about the other ones. You got Christians who observe the Sabbath and they observe the Passover, but you got these other ones who say that I'm a Christian. Are you thinking that follows Judaic law, the Torah law? Yeah, I'm saying you have. That's what the Christians did the first 400 years after eat, that. Do you eat pork? No, I don't. Do you mow the corners of your head? Do I mow the corners of my head? Yes. No. Why is your hair cut? Why is my hair cut? Yes. My hair is cut, but I don't, I don't get it. That's the corners of your head. It means, it tells you in the books not to mourn the corners of your head. I'm saying we go by the commandments. Ma. Christians go by the commandments, but they don't go by the law because if their son is disobedient, of course, the law. Let's go to St. John's chapter. Let's go to St. John's chapter 1 and see what Jesus says, verse 17, about the law. Well, I know what you're saying, but there are certain laws, like the burnt offerings, every single day of the year. In Who said so? You, they did not do burnt Who offerings so? every single day. Who said we shouldn't? If Jesus said we, if Jesus kept all the law, tell me what man went against Jesus' word and changed the law. Jesus said we should follow the law of Moses. Right here in St. John chapter 1, verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus. He said nothing about change came from Jesus. Why do we change? Well, Why? We, we changed it because what happened was, was the fact that when these, uh, Luke went to the Gentile uh, on what he, not Luke, but Peter, when he said that he had a vision from God, he went to a Gentile and knowing that it was wrong for Jews to go visit Gentiles, he went under the Spirit of God and he came back because God gave him the Holy Spirit and he says, hey look, if God gives this Gentile the Holy Spirit, then who am I to say, well, he has to be circumcised? And that was the whole thing in the council in, in the 15th chapter of Acts. I mean, who stood up? Listen, who stood you, up? could you do me a favor? What's that? Because you keep talking about Peter and Mark and them. And when you go to Acts 13, well, this is when they were in Antioch, and then mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, they went, okay, down to Cyprus. Uh -huh. uh, this is Paul and Barnabas together. That's right. And first of all, you know, as they ministered, Lord, ministered to the Lord and fasted, That's the right. Holy Spirit, now I don't know, <laughs> the Holy Spirit told somebody, must have told a congregation to separate Paul and Barnabas, right? Um, I mean, so why? Why? Why, is it, that, why my, is it that Paul did not want to go back and confront disciples of Jesus? Now, the answer is in 13, you know. But Paul was a worshiper of a man named Bar Jesus. Bar Jesus? Yes. That's the man that he blinded for a whole year. Right. So why is he going to worship him and then blind him? You got it perfect. See? You see how they did it? I'm saying the man was a fool. Let me show you why. What is it benefit him to do? What did Paul say in Corinthians about himself? I mean, he said he was the one who persecuted the church. I'm the worst of all the disciples to be blessed. Yeah. So why are you asking me the same question about Christianity about a man? Why did Paul do it? Because Paul had the power to do it as a as a Pharisee. That's how. And when he repented, as you could say, he changed his lifestyle. He worshipped this man here. You better read 13. I've read this. Okay. <laughs> I've read it. And all what does it say it. about this man? They say he's a false prophet. And false tell you false right there. Well, let's the people read. Please turn to chapter 13 of Acts and let's start reading. From five, and when they, when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues. Wait a minute, where did they preach? This is after Christ. Was there a church established yet? After Christ? Yes. Yeah. Why are they teaching in the synagogues? Because the word church in the Greek language, yeah. all it is is ecclesia. It was not a building. It was the a word, people. The word it means call out one. It does not. Members. It does not. The the word, what does it mean then? The word church means assembly. In Greek. Assembly. We got it together. That's assembly. what the word means. Okay, I mean called out ones, called out members in Greek. It's no, it's it's the word. no, it's just not it's not that, fair. It's not nice to do that. Don't yeah. do that. Don't say it means one thing. Don't say it means one thing and it means another. It's just wrong to do that. That's what Paul did. It doesn't mean that. Look up in any Bible dictionary, you see the word church means assemble. To come together. Bible dictionary. I'm just saying for you. No, well, I'm talking about I have the languages. It's different. But I have the Greek lexicons and I go by what the Greek is, what, what they have in there and it says that the um, Greek word for church in that particular instance where Paul was using it, uh, the original inspired word was ecclesia. You really feel, you feel honest doing what you just did? 
And that you feel honest doing what you just did in that instance where Paul is using it. See how you keep on adding these little things in there can change the meaning. Okay, when he says like, church, he's talking about what the world church means. Not what Paul says. Paul ain't God. But church in the New Testament, it means okay. ecclesia. I'll let you have that. Go ahead. Let's go on. We're old friends at this. Church we was established uh, on the day of Pentecost. When 120 people were baptized, that was when the church so was established. When, so when Jesus said to Peter, on this rock I build my church, it wasn't established then. No, it wasn't really established. But then, it wasn't really I mean, it was established from the foundation of the world in that sense. Yeah, it, Jesus it said, established, yeah. Christ said, on this rock I build my church. So that's when it was established, when Christ said it, not when you said it. All right, but when Isaiah foretold about it, I mean, it was established long before the Isaiah was the talking about a congregation of Jews. He wasn't talking about no Christians. Yeah? Yes. Well, you know, when I well was Isaiah's son, not Jesus. Well, he wasn't talking about it. What is he talking about? He says he's in the spirit in uh, the 62nd chapter of Isaiah. He's says, not talking about Jesus. No. He's talking about his son, Emmanuel. And the whole prophecy is not even about it. Because if you read the prophecies about Emmanuel and the coming of Christ, as you call it, the Messiah. I'm not talking about chapter 9 now. I'm talking about right. chapter 62. I'm saying when he talks about the fact that, well, this is in defense for the name of Christianity in my, in my yeah. camp. Um, when he says that God is talking to him, and he says, you know, I'm going to call my servants by a new name, and right. the name that I will name them. Uh -huh. and now, God's servants were always known as the, you can call them Israelites, Hebrews, you know, Jews or whatever. Yeah. Um, but ever since Jesus came, his right. servants became another name, which yeah. is the name of Christianity. No, it doesn't. What, no, did, they, it. what did they become? They became known as what Jesus said. What did he say? I leave you in what? Peace. Yes. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, as you say. So Jesus, the new name that they were talking about was the name Muslim, one who's of peace, a peacemaker. And Jesus told him the name, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. He actually told them out of his mouth that they'd be called Muslims. And they still, when he came in the upper room to them, when he came, I mean, when he came into the room after the crucifixion, as they said, have it, he said, "Assalamu alaikum." I never you know anyone more peaceful than those Christians who humbly died. So tell me why the Christians, if, you, if you call them peaceful, tell me what what's peaceful about cutting a man's ear. Huh? Well, okay, I'm talking about after this. This was after this. After that, they ran and hid in the upper room out of fear with the door shut, they said. Yeah, but I'm saying there was no more violence. I'm talking about Peter with the same man that cut that man's ear off. In his instructions in, in uh, First Peter, he tells those people to be kind and respect and honor no, the Jesus emperor. Said and the emperor at that time was Nero. And you know how crazy he was. So I'm saying he humbled himself a little whole lot. All right. I, I, I appreciate it. I mean, I'm sitting down. Let's go back to 13 and get this point across because these people got to know about the fake Jesus that Paul worshiped. Let's go to this because a lot of people don't know that there are two Jesuses in the Bible. There's the real Jesus, the Savior, and then there's a fake Jesus that, that is the father of Christianity. Yeah, there's also a Simon the Pastor that a lot of people started worshiping in Rome because he, birthed, he uh, really... He corrupted a lot of things and a lot of people did start that's following right. him. That's, and, it, that's right. But you know what? Those yeah. true Christians, they never followed him because that's they knew. That's, that's, that's what you say. That's what you say. Well, I mean, I, if I lived in that day, I would know because I know now about you him. You live today and you're still in and you're holding a book. I, I, I wouldn't follow you're him. You're a book in your hand that you admit has mistakes in it, but you're quoting from it. I haven't admitted it. You did? Oh, you didn't admit. I you didn't tell me that book is not correct when I asked you about the epistles of John chapter 7 verse 5 and I said it wasn't in the original text and you said I agree? You didn't say that. Okay, let's pretend you didn't say that. Let's go on. You ain't getting me away from chapter 13. I know what you're trying to do. You go, I'm going to stay on chapter 13. But these, these souls in there got to know that there's a fake Jesus. That white Jesus on the wall is not the real Jesus. That's I know the that. of the beast in the book of Revelation when they said they'll create an image and give it life and make man worship it. And that's what Jesus referred to as the lying Jew. We said, I know the blasphemers that will call themselves Jews or not. They're synagogues of Satan. So the Christian teaches it now until they buy it. Jesus was a Jew. And on your mother's wall is a picture of a white Jew who's an image of the Antichrist. Now let's go out to this thing here. I agree with that too. Now we move on to chapter... Uh, so the whole uh, congregation of Christians that I know and associate with, they know all those facts. I'm glad to hear that because there's some children that are waking up. I'm not fighting. I'm glad your congregation is waking up. I mean, many, you know, the book of Revelation says uh, in the 12th chapter, the whole world is deceived by Satan. And, you know, that, that is true because the whole world is. But you know what? Yeah. Jesus said his flock was always small. The Quran tells Muslims that Satan is going to get everybody except the Muslim, except us. So we've been told the same thing. Yeah, but... And Jesus said... And Jesus told them in the book of John that his congregation is another congregation. Right in the 19th chapter. And his, and his disciples didn't like it. He told them it was another congregation. Wait a minute. Back to 13. Yeah. 
Get out of here with that stuff. <laughs> We're back to 13. Now, if we read on, we'll find out that it says, in, in the books of Acts chapter 13, verse 4. Let me head up and get down. Yeah, he says, so being, went out, uh, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Okay. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. Right. They also had John as their assistant, John Mark, right? Right. Now, when they had gone through the island of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, who's, who, a sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Now, stop. Now, now, I want you to stop a minute, because this man has three attributes that Christians jump over very fastly. One of them is, he was called a sorcerer. Right. The word sorcerer suffering or suffering means he performed magic. Right. Exactly. All right? Yes. Let us hear the false prophet who yes. performs magic. Uh, he was of the Jew. tribe of Judah. Right. And, and his, his name, name was, was Jesus. And his name was in Aramic, Bar, which means son uh-huh. and Jesus. Yeah, okay. Now, isn't it, isn't it strange that this man has all the attributes? Now, when you jump down to nine of the same chapter, you know what you're going to find? What? Then who? Then Saul. Who is? Call Paul, go with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him. I said, okay, and said, intently, I mean, he looked at him and said, man, what are you doing? That's okay, that's your, that's that. I love it. I love the way you do that. <laughs> he said, Paul, I, it's good to see Paul alive again and perverting Jesus. No, but that's what he said. He looked <laughs> intently at the man. He and at said, all <laughs> full of all deceit and all fraud. That's so right. immediately he picked right up and said, wait a minute. <laughs> He's you are fraud, buddy. Good, keep going, though. And uh, you son of the devil. That's right. You enemy of all righteousness. That's right. Will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Go ahead. And now, indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind. Go ahead. Not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a darkness came, came over his eyes, and what happened? He had somebody to lead him off by the hand. I mean, if Paul's working with this guy, they got some kind of scheme going, boy. Hey, I don't know go what ahead. they're trying to do. You, if you read on, you're going to see this scheme. The pro council believed. The pro council believed after that. After this sorcerer had deceived so many in that land, I mean, even the the, the pro council at that point said, "Hey, wait a minute." That's right. People really thought that this man yeah. was God. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's right. But right. um, now I don't know. Did you say that the guy back there that Peter and John rebuked also, who his name was Simon. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had that same, he bewitched people too, and everybody yeah, he had that same power man from God too. So, I mean, you know, yeah, there were a lot. Way back in Exodus, you know, when Moses came up there to Janus and Jambres, you know, they were magicians, and their staff turned into a cobra too. So, you know, Satan has his ministers. Right, you're touching on what I'm saying. Satan God was for signs and wonders and miracles, and Jesus told us in Matthews, as you say, 24, how to recognize them and what name they would come under. He said many. He didn't say all those who come in my name. No, he said all right. who come in my name, which would be Christians. You got all of them You got many of those Christians. You one hundred percent right. He said many, not all. That's right. Many who yeah. come. Now, what did he say? Though? What did he say to what? So, how do we know? How do we know? Yes, you know by the fruit on their tree. Okay. And you can go to James' letter, and he okay, says. Okay, I just asked you about certain things about the law of Moses, and asked you, did you follow it? And you don't, because there are certain things that when Jesus came, he established that was not necessary any longer with the Passover. Well, show me where Jesus said, you no longer have to keep Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, and all the Judaic holidays. Show me specifically where it says you should not be circumcised no more. Don't say Paul said it, because I'm not interested in Paul. Show me where it says that you're allowed to cut off your beards, you know, and stop wearing the, the, the yarmulke or the kappa or the, the headpiece. Show me where it says people could go back to eating pork. Show me where it says, I know you said you don't eat pork, right? Don't say it's not what goes in the bank accounts, but what comes out of that because it's not talking about food, it's talking about the truth.